Hey everybody, welcome on back for another video here discussing Bitcoin once again and mainly its relationship to the entire market. Uh, for any one of us that's new to our YouTube channel, my name is Josh Levitin. I'm the senior instructor here at Cyber Trading University. Uh, right away, I'll get out the gate and say this. If you're interested in learning more about Bitcoin or any sort of crypto analysis altogether, just do yourself a favor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button right on our YouTube channel, that being at youtube.com slash cyber trading you. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and just spread the good word around here, folks, because you know, of course, we've been following Bitcoin for the last really two years here at Cyber Trading University. Uh, throughout the afternoon meetings I do weekly or daily, rather, um, I tend to go over Bitcoin here and there. But more so over the last month, we've been producing these types of videos. Uh, so that's why I say that. But let's hop right into it, though, folks. So for right now, we happen to see Bitcoin ended up making a nice little spike back above a key level that we were talking about last month, right around 40, 41,000. So most recently, Recently, we ended up seeing Bitcoin begin to break that support. And that was at the end of January. And at that point, I was telling you folks, hey, if we happen to see a big drop like this, be really careful. Because in my opinion, I think it's going to hold as resistance to see a big support level break. I'm expecting that to turn into resistance at first. So, hey, this ended up holding underneath resistance fairly well, right around the 40,000 mark, generally underneath even the 500 EMA. But since that time, we ended up seeing a bit of a spike up, but not a whole lot's happened since. So I want to kind of just bring us back to reality here, because although this spike up seems bullish and it seems like there's a chance we could have a nice push up over time, I think that there's several reasons as to why we should think it's more likely to drop off. And hey, listen, I, I'm a big bull when it comes to Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. I see a huge future in it for the next many years, right? Like a lot of us, but it's to say that we can't only think bullish because that's essentially thinking foolish. And if we, if we can't, if we don't expect, uh, you know, Bitcoin to drop off and we keep buying, what's going to happen when it tanks, if it tanks. So we've seen that obviously over the last, you know, three to four months altogether since the middle of November. But now at this point though, it's to say, I think that there's still a little bit more work to get, work to do in order for Bit Bitcoin to truly begin to push up. And on top of that, there's, of course, outside factors around the world that's affecting just the economy as a whole. You know, we ended up seeing the interest rates uh, you know, hold, at least from the last FOMC meeting. But we know that the Fed's going to raise the rates several times throughout this year, or at least that's what's being projected. You know, could the could the move have already been factored in? Could the drop from November 10th have already been factored in with that? I, I don't think so. I think that we're still going to happen to see a bit of slippage within the entire market, the U.S. market as a whole. And with Bitcoin fairly tied to it, I would anticipate Bitcoin to eventually drop with the S&P and with the Dow. And actually, we're going to get to that in just a bit. But in terms of the basic charting, though, let's go over just this key level, 40,000, roughly above 40,000 there. I, you know, hey, for right now, if this ends up beginning to pull back, this would be a critical point to see this hold right around the 40,000 mark, you know, probably a little slippage around that 40,000 or the 500 EMA there. So even if it breaks a little under 40, don't worry too much. Now, if it ends up breaking under 40 pretty hard, now that's something to be very worried about in the sense of a further drop ahead. Um, you know, oftentimes when we happen to see a straight trend line like this build across a period of time, there is a known pattern called the bump and run. And that is a bullish pattern, but it does require this to pull back down and retest this trend line as support. When will that be? Will that even happen? Uh, you know, that I'm thinking about a little afterwards here. Let's see what happens right around this area, 40,000, 40,750 right there and the 500 EMA. Again, if that holds a support for a few days or even a week of uh, time, then it's showing some strength there. So I'd be led to believe there's a better chance, should we see that, for us to happen to have a nice bounce back up. If this breaks under 40,000 really hard coming up again in the coming days, then I'm anticipating a much bigger drop, perhaps back down to that 29 line. Or, you know, as I said from my first Bitcoin video back uh, in, in the beginning of January, you know, hey, if this if this is the beginning of a pair market, and, you know, we have to think about all possibilities. What's stopping this from dropping down to like 20,000 or 17,000? I think that was the... Uh, 
the 100 EMA on the monthly chart. So, you know, that would be an incredibly strong support level in the grand scheme of things. We just have to be very mindful of all possibilities. And for right now, at least this area of support here or these levels that create support, you know, we hope to see this hold in the coming days and weeks. Um, along with the interest rates being raised, obviously, there's a lot of news with Russia and Ukraine. I don't want to talk out of pocket, folks. I don't know the first thing about international uh, policies and all of that. So it's just to say, obviously, it's not a good headline for the market and any um, you know significant update on that could lead to a big drop altogether within the major indices. All right. Uh, now, I want to go into the hourly chart pretty quick. This here is a daily. So, you know, that's why I'm more following these EMAs from the daily chart, though. Uh, in terms of just what we happen to have on the hourly, one point of focus could be the 500 EMA on the hourly. It's a little bit above 41,000 right now. So perhaps that could also add to the support level here as it begins to pull back over time. I haven't bought anything since here, of course. I told you folks from the last video I made back in the mid middle or end of January that I'm expecting this to pull back and to see you know, what happens from that point. So I haven't bought anything since. I'm going to take my time here at least and wait to see what happens around this area. Now, I had mentioned before that Bitcoin you know, is strongly tied to the U.S. indices, right? And, and that is true. Um, I, I wanted to find a good chart to show us all this because truth be told, I didn't really have a great chart myself prior to recording this meeting, but I ended up doing a quick little Google search and there's a little, you know, stuff on here it's actually from a user on trading view so it looks like white fox crypto is the user that made this chart there's a lot of noise to this chart and i can't hide it all so i apologize for that let's just do our best to analyze bitcoin here on the top this this sim this chart here on the top is bitcoin and then this right here on the bottom where my cursor is moving, this is the S&P 500 index. So, you know, between seeing this chart here, it does go to show they are strongly tied together, you know, not perfectly correlated, but strongly tied together. Uh, most recently, we ended up seeing the S&P begin to push back up a tiny amount here going back into the end of January. Well, what's interesting about that? Although it did move up a little bit more later on, and Bitcoin was relatively flat here, holding underneath that 40,000 area as the S&P was pushing back up at first. So alongside just the basic Bitcoin chart that we have here, I just truly think that this could be something as well that we should really look to keep an eye on, just the correlation between the S&P and Bitcoin as a whole. Uh, lastly, the last thing I wanted to touch upon here, a quick water break in between, but it's more or less just looking at the volume, the order flow that's out there. And we can look at FTX futures, but for right now, I, I want to show Coinbase. So Coinbase is, of course, one of the biggest exchanges, uh, I mean, in the world and certainly in the United States. It's to say, at least with the heat map that we've been using, well, one sign that could help us out at least a bit is the fact that we're now beginning to see a lot more liquidity added to the book here as support. Looks like we have about 175 to 191 Bitcoin worth of support right at 31,000. A little bit above that at $32,050 right here, even bigger, about 240 to 250 Bitcoin right at that price. You know, think about that, 250 Bitcoin times 40,000 or 44,000, you know, whatever it's priced at right now, that's a lot of money right there at that price. So we've seen this happen before. We saw it happen recently here at 42 and 45, you know, with lower highs. Well, we ended up seeing the break of support here, right? But once this ended up breaking support at 40,000, there really wasn't anything significant underneath that. That's what led for this to make a much sharper drop heading into the uh, you know end of January. So since that time, of course, we've had Bitcoin begin to push back up a bit here. But look at the support again. We're starting to at least see a lot more liquidity over the last two weeks around that 31,000, around that 32 or even here at 35,000. You know, this seems to be a pretty moderately sized support level as well for about 155 here. Uh, you know, so that actually is a pretty good sign for right now. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to continue to pump, of course. I, I think the outside factors that could affect the markets and the indices as a whole will, uh, you know, will kind of show you know, what happens here coming up. But this would be something to keep a really strong eye on, and especially in the sense of what happens if this liquidity gets pulled. You know, hey, this you know volume got placed on the book going into the end of January doesn't mean that it can't get pulled, right? So what happens when we happen to see 
support pulled from from the book. You know, it's essentially like saying what happens when you happen to have the, the rug or the floor pulled underneath you, right? And effectively, you happen to have the pressure leading to Bitcoin, allowing it to drop back down should we happen to have that support pulled. So that's just something to be mindful of, like I'd said, you know, in terms of the liquidity out there on the bit. Uh, in terms of a significant resistance for us to watch here, nothing really out there in the order book that truly stands out. It seems like there is a little something here at 45. So that obviously is a resistance for right now. Above that, I mean, hey, in a, in a bullish scenario where Bitcoin makes a nice break overnight or if good news comes out somehow, I, you know, perhaps we could see this make a nice run back up. I don't know if we're going to see it move back up to 70 right away. This actually is the next major significant uh, resistance, at least based off the volume out there. In terms of at least a, a midway point or a level to watch otherwise here, this would be something in interesting to keep an eye on. Look at this line here. And I made this kind of quick here, but back from June all the way to present day, this price where this blue line is, this represents uh, essentially the price that's had the most amount of volume traded off of it. So that will create a big level for us to watch going forward for all the volume that was filled, of course, around this price, but in particular, right around 47 from consolidation, of course, you know, from you know, autumn of last year into the beginning of this. It's just to say, though, for all of that volume that's been traded across that 47,000 price, that definitely should be a resistance coming up in between. So even if this does push up a little bit more, not fully out of the doghouse yet, I would say wait to see 47 and go from there. Otherwise, if we just continue to see the drop off, which to be transparent, again, that's more what I'm leaning towards. I am more leaning towards Bitcoin to pull back uh, coming up. Well, should that happen, then we'll see what happens, like I would said, around the 40,000 area. Um, here's the daily once more. So 40,000 and really the 500 EMA here uh, from the daily chart. All right, folks. But again, hey, if you're interested in learning more about crypto, Bitcoin as a whole, uh, just make sure to give us a like and subscribe right to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash cybertradingu. Uh, also, just go right to our homepage, cybertradinguniversity.com for more information regarding our live monthly classes. All right, folks, I'm going to look to put out another video going into either the weekend or going into early next week. So stay tuned for that.